Hello and welcome back to CycleFab, I'm Larry. Today I want to show you the modifications that I made on my Eastwood dual voltage powder coat gun that's right here. Now I made a video last week about me using this gun and I made the comment that I made the modifications before I ever used the gun. Yes I did and there's good reason for that. Most of these guns work in the same way. In other words you have a hopper that's full of powder they push air into the hopper, mixing the powder, and then it exits out another tube. Well, I had a Harbor Freight, and I used it for two and a half years. It worked exactly the same way as this gun. As a matter of fact, the only benefits that this gun has over the Harbor Freight mostly is the fact that it can go up to 25 kilovolts. Both of these guns operate at 15 kilovolts on the low setting. Now the Harbor Freight, that's it, only 15 kilovolts. This gun can go up to 25 kilovolts with the flick of a switch. That's really the only difference between the two. The problems that I encountered with the Harbor Freight would be inherent to this one. So that's the reason why I went ahead and made the modifications that I did before I ever used the gun. Now, one of the things that I did to begin with is move my regulator from a wall mount regulator to a grip regulator or a gun regulator and also a filter. Now, the filter is supposed to get out water and oil. That's fine and good if it's mounted directly to the gun. If I'm running this on a wall along with the regulator, then 25 foot of air hose, you really don't know what's in that air hose. It, it's an accumulation of just stuff, you know, water, oil, residue, anything. So you want to move your filter and your regulator right next to the gun. This regulator and filter I got from Harbor Freight. The regulator costs about six bucks. The filter I think was three. I'm going to upgrade that and I'm going to buy a regulator that's a little bit better on the adjustment side. This one is too sensitive. Uh, it works just fine once you get it set, but a better regulator would help. Now, as far as the filter goes, I really don't know that much about filters. Uh, I don't know any cons to this one versus any that are more expensive. I think that I'm going to spend probably about 10 to $13. I think that was the price that I found on a better filter or a more expensive one. One thing that I've found out with equipment such as this, you kind of get what you pay for. In other words, the more money you spend on it, the better the product is. So that's why I'm doing the upgrade on the regulator and the filter. Now, with that out of the way, let's get to the real modifications that I made in this gun. Let's start with the mixing. You have two tubes in this and just like you have two tubes on the Harbor Freight model. You have an input where air goes in and then you have an output where the air goes out carrying the powder molecules with it. Inside this chamber is where the mixing occurs. Well what you don't want is surging or big globs of powder going up into the input tube. You want that powder to really mix well with the air. So what I did is drill two eighth inch holes about two thirds of the way up. And the holes are spaced about a half inch apart from one another. What that does is it helps with the mixing of the powder. And I did notice that I had no problems with surging or clumping of powder wanting to shoot or exhaust out the end of my gun. After that, let's move down to the tip. This right here is just a piece of PDC, two inches long, that fits directly over the end of the gun. This is nothing more than a sink drain tube replacement that you can get at any of the box hardware stores. It's just a piece of pipe about 10 inches long with a flange on one side. I just cut two inches off of it because it matched the diameter of this gun right here. And it's just a snug fit over it. Now, what this does is instead of your powder coming out in a large pattern, I do mostly small parts, as do most of you. It helps give you a nice, even column of material coming out the end of your gun. 
It also helps the powder molecules mix better with the air, which is what you want. You do not want jetting uh, where you get a very narrow column inside of a larger column. And we'll get, that has to do with the diffuser and I'll get to that in just a moment. But the nozzle, this piece, helps keep the column straight. So you get more powder concentrated on the spot that you're trying to powder coat. Before I go any further with that, Eastwood says that this gun works best at 8 PSI. And it does work very well at 8 PSI. As a matter of fact, once you do these modifications to it, it works better at 6 to 7 PSI. Possibly even lo as low as 5. Because from the factory, you got to remember this has a large diffuser on it. It's putting out a huge pattern. You're bringing that pattern down to this size. So you don't need 8 PSI in order to get the flow of powder that you would normally get on a larger pattern. So knocking the pressure back down actually works better in this gun. If you're running around 8 PSI, you're actually probably wasting powder. At least that's what I've noticed. Run the gun after the modifications are done around 6 to 7 PSI. That's why I need a better regulator than what I have on here. This electrode, this piece right here, that is what energizes your powder. This is what gives it a positive charge. Increasing the surface area of this electrode with a conductive diffuser helps a lot. Now, this diffuser is made out of brass. It's one inch long, half inch in diameter. And if you see that seam right down the center of it, that small crest, that's half inch both ways. It's right in the center of it. On one end, I have a quarter inch radius. On the other end, where it goes on to the electrode, is just something to help diffuse the powder. It's, uh, you can see it right there. What this does is it stops, well, it does two things. It keeps your column of powder from acting like a jet to where you get a heavy concentration right in the center and not much of a concentration on the outside of your powder column. It just diffuses the powder. Now, another thing this does is it increases the surface area of the electrode and causes the powder molecules to become more easily charged. Now, this piece here fits over just about a half inch. And I also have a half inch distance between the edge here to the center of the diffuser. Now, this diffuser has a half inch deep hole in it to fit over the electrode. It does not go all the way through. Now, as far as the material goes for the diffuser, uh, I'm using brass just because I had half inch diameter brass rod laying around. You can use aluminum, you can use steel, any conductive material will work. You can refer back to my last video of me using this gun. I'll put a link right up here in the corner. And you can see how the powder comes out. Now that's at eight PSI. Turning the PSI down to five to seven pounds within that range would work a lot better. Now I'm very happy with the modifications that I made and I'm glad that I did it before I used the gun the first time. I would have got the job done, but it wouldn't have been to my satisfaction. If you do purchase an Eastwood dual voltage gun, I do highly suggest that you do these modifications. They work extremely well. If you've liked this video, please hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. I'll be seeing you guys next week. Take care.